Let's go. Welcome back, guys, to another episode of Explore Rigs. Now, look, you've been asking for this one um, over the last couple of weeks. We've had it down at the full drive shows. We gave you a sneak peek. We've, uh, we've had the Fraser Island episode go live. We're back over at Fraser filming the Explore Life Christmas party as we speak. And we thought, why not give you the uh, full rig rundown on the big GU? So, guys, if you want to find out, why we decided to go to the GU, and you want to know more, the ins and outs under the bonnet and all those bits and pieces, go and watch the build video. This is sort of just a final wrap up video, but we're not gonna mug around, let's get straight into it. Up front, let's go. So up front, the first thing you'll notice is the bar. Now, I tell you what, this is a pretty mean looking bar. I hunted around, there's so many different options that you can do for the front of the GU. I got onto Muzz from uh, Muzz Bars, and uh, he managed to, Bang me out one, just in time to whack it on before the Melbourne show, but I tell you what, I couldn't be more stoked. This thing is actually schmick. Of course, it's a full winch compatible bar. We've got the Light Force 22 inch light bar tucked into the bar. We've actually gone for a specific powder coating as well on the bar that matches the uh, Boss Canopy. So it's like a nice matte black finish. I'm absolutely stoked with it. We did the blackout on the grill. Still the factory grill there. Just fits in the uh, Light Force bodies up on top here. So they are the Light Force HTX2s. Uh, I put them on the front of the 79, absolutely frothed them. So they were going straight on. Up on top, of course, no surprises. We got the GME, we got the XRS unit. I'll give you a look at that in the car. Uh, we're running the big antenna. It also obviously comes off and we can throw the little 2.1 DBI on as well. GME, best in the game, simple as. Uh, we run them on all the vehicles. Brown Davis, we've got the Brown Davis bash plate tucked underneath there. The, the winch, it's a run bar. We went a 12,000 pound. The whole reason we built this truck is to get out there and do those harder tracks. So we wanted to make sure we had the big winch to uh, hoik us up the hills. We've gone for an aftermarket set of, of uh, headlights here as well. He's gone pretty overboard. Nice little The Explore Life engraving them. Uh, he's done an absolute cracking job. Kale from EC Off-Road, he actually built the car for us. Um, so he got all the lights done, the grill, the blackout. He was the man that managed to throw this whole thing together in a week uh, before we went down to the Melbourne show. So pretty impressive. Let's sneak around to the side. Righto, no surprises here. Of course, we've got the BF Goodrich tyres. Uh, we went in the mud terrain obviously KM3s. Once again, uh, we want all the grip and traction we can get when doing these bigger bigger hill climbs. You can absolutely dump the tyre pressure out of these things and they handle it really well. Um, 35 inch, so they're 315, 75, 16 on the uh, Vapor, ROH Vapors. I almost went the same as the 79, but I thought we'd go something a little bit different. I'm actually frothing the vapors. They got a little bit of silver accent, which sort of ties into the car, which I love. So wheels and tires, mint. So suspension guys, we didn't muck around. We went straight to Superior Engineering. We got their three inch legal approved kit. Everything basically gets replaced. All new radius arms, is, uh, aftermarket sway bar, sway bar links, extended brake lines. Their three inch coils, guys. And then we paired that up with the King's 2.5 remote res. We've been running the Kings on all of our vehicles, so we decided to keep with the Kings, but all the componentry underneath is your superior gear. So excited to get this thing off road and put it through its paces and actually flex and see how it goes. But um, look, I've seen it in action with Bree and Sam's car, which is why I decided to go and hit the uh, team at Superior up. Obviously we've had it on the beach, little bit of mucking around, but keen to get into the hard stuff and see how it goes. Right, one of the things you're gonna notice straight away is obviously the car's silver. Uh, used to be the white, so Rap Cartel went the matte silver. Uh, we sort of wanted to color code it to, to suit the 79. One thing I am gonna do, bud, is go and hit the girls up from Slick As. We're gonna run the bush wraps uh, kit over the top of the wrap, which will protect the wrap, makes it so much easier to clean, and uh, stops all those scratching. So that's still to come. Uh, the car's about 95%, so the one thing I am looking forward to, we should get him next week, we're going back to see Muzz. Uh, he's doing us a set of scrub bars down into a slider slash step. So uh, very excited for that. I feel like that's the last thing to really finish off the exterior of this car. 
Of course, we got the MSA mirrors. Um, you guys would have seen these on the 79. Simple, easy. They look clean as they look absolutely factory but you still get that much bigger mirror um, and obviously we're always towing so the fact that we can just slide them out on the run put the toy hauler behind it way we go msa mirrors absolutely stoked with them then we got the front runner rack so um, we wanted that short little stubby rack up on top i've always wanted a single cab gu and this is sort of what i always envisioned so we got some nice uh work lights whatever you want to call them, camp lights on the side of the rack. You got the bottle opener. One good thing about the front runner roof rack, guys, is every accessory known to man. You want to put jerry cans up there, gas bottle holders, whatever you want, they do it all. So we put the Max Trax mount up there. Obviously, we've gone with the gunmetal grey in the Max Trax Extreme with the black teeth. Really just sets it off. I kind of want to put some uh, grey ones over on the 79, looking at this, to be honest. And then, yeah, we've got the uh, five Genesis uh, LED lights up on top massive amount of light get a lot of spread out of these ones up on top which is great for those uh, long drives the distance i get off the htx2s on the front they're a hybrid so you've got your hid and your led surround so the front gives me that real long distance the five spotties just absolutely turn night and day in front of us nice little windbreak too so i don't actually get too much wind noise with the roof rack and all the lights up there surprisingly let's get into the back where this thing really starts to uh heat up and really gives it a point of difference from every other gu out there i was arming and arming with a few different options i thought about maybe doing like a bit of a tubed bar setup with the tray uh whether we went old school like a timber flat deck and then I spoke to Boss and I was like, do you do one for a GU? And he'd happened to have just done one, seen photos. And I was like, I tell you what, we want that. We modified it to suit us. But uh, look, having used the Boss aluminium gear on the 79 for the last two years, traveling around Australia, and that thing has not missed a beat. So it was a bit of a no brainer. And I tell you what, I think it just transforms this whole truck, gives me a point of difference to all the other GUs out there. Uh, the, the matte black finish looks absolutely incredible. Now it is his premium tray, which means you get all the bells and whistles. So you get all your underbody toolboxes that are absolutely massive. These are all hooked up to our central locking as well. So everything locks off central locking. Plenty of storage in there. Nice little lights come on in there as well. On this one, we actually blacked out everything. So on the 79, all of your uh, tray mounts, your handles, uh, a lot of the bolts and bits and pieces are all silver. Full blackout on this one. So we decided to go with the short canopy on this one, guys. Obviously the GU is that harder wheel and I wanna try and keep the weight uh, down as much as possible. It's why we don't have anything up on top. I wanna to keep that center of gravity nice and low. So we went with the, I think it comes in at like just under 800 mil. This is the dog box slash storage area. Anyone who knows if you've got a single cab, you always want somewhere you can just throw your bags and bits and pieces. So cool thing about this, you can undo uh, these six bolts, full mesh. So this is the dog box. So little Koopy, when he's coming on an adventure, I can just chuck him in the dog box. When he's not here, storage. So pretty simple. Uh, I just got a toolkit in here, guys. I've got a Max Trax recovery bag with all the gear, Red Arc solar blanket. That's all we really need for one of these little trips away. Now. This is where the magic happens when it comes to the Boss Aluminium. It's the same, very, very similar setup to what I've got in the 79. That thing sits at 100% all day, every day. The 12 volt system is absolutely insane. So we had to do it again. We've gone with the Red Arc system. Uh, we're running the uh, TVMS. We got the Red Vision up here. Nice, easy display tucked up top here as well. I actually prefer it up top out of the way as opposed to where I've got it in the 79. But we're running the 2000 watt Synwave Red Arc inverter in this. So we've got our 240 power there when we wanna muck around, have our toasted sandwiches. We're not putting a coffee machine in this car, but we got the toasted sandwich maker on the go. We're gonna have the uh, blender out for the girls making margaritas and carrying on. The cool thing about the Red Vision, I'm able to turn all my work lights on all around the car. I can see my water levels, fridge comes on and off. And then we've got bucket loads of USB outlets. We're running a big 200 amp hour Red Arc lithium battery in there as well. A little bit overkill maybe, considering this is just the weekend truck. But um, once I started going through it, I decided let's just put it all in because we will use uh, all the extra power. And even right now we're sitting on Fraser. Uh, the fridge is running. We're not moving for three or four days. So I know I've got enough battery power to sit here without any solar blankets or solar panels. That's one thing we may do is just add 
a single maybe 120 watt, 150 watt panel on the roof, and then this thing will always stay charged. But Red Arc guys, Australian made, Australian manufactured, we've been down through the factory, it's built for these conditions, and it'll take a hiding that we're gonna give this thing off road, shake around, and uh, we know at the end of the day, we can still have cold beers in the fridge, it runs everything. Uh, and the best thing about Boss is they work in really well with Red Arc, all their paneling suits the Red Arc products. Now, pretty biased, Boss Aluminium does it just about the best. You look in here, you've got a display screen, you've got your outlets, but there's no cords, there's no cables, there's nothing that's gonna get hit. I hate seeing cables run everywhere in the canopy, that's just me. The 79's neat as hell, and this thing is so neat. That's the dog box section, guys. Uh, it is a jack off as well, so I can jack off, put the full sides on, which allows me to put a dirt bike and bits and pieces on. Uh, we'll keep moving around. Nice little under storage box here, once again, all nicely carpeted, central locking, lights come on. And then we decided to put a roll bar on the back. Now the reason I did this was so that um, we could have the awning, which is on the other side that I'm gonna show you guys. And it also allowed us to mount a little EcoX speaker. Come check this out. All right guys, we're interrupting this episode to let you know we've got the biggest giveaway in Explore Life history. You wanna win your very own Patriot X1N. Now's the chance. We've been traveling around Australia for three months with this one, and we're gonna give you guys a chance to win your very own brand new 2022 Patriot Camper. Uh, we wanna give back for all you guys following along and supporting the online store. So this month, grab anything from the online store, every single items and entry, guys, and you might be taking home a brand new Patriot Camper. Don't miss out. So this is why we put the roll bar in. We got the SE26 Eco X sound bar on the back. If you've never heard of these guys, check them out. This one's hardwired, it's waterproof, it sits here in the sun, salt, sand, absolutely cranks. It's got the party lights. Uh, the cool thing about these ones, guys, is they link. So three or four guys back there at camp have got the Eco X. I've got one in the 79 as well. You can link them all together and all play the same song, get that full 360 surround sound at the campsite. A little bit wanky, but it's bloody epic. Stoked that I actually still have a bit of tray space. Obviously on the 79, I've got no tray space. So the fact that we can just load this up with all of our wet life jackets, surfboards, tubes, and bits and pieces is absolutely epic. Now, nice big trundle drawer on the rear, guys. Heaps of storage. It's got the slide table as well. Predominantly, we just put tools and bits and pieces in here normally, um, just bulk storage. But super handy, throw the cooker on here at the back. The awning swings all the way around, covers it, you get shade. With the, uh, something I didn't mention, the headboard is actually a water tank. So we're running 150 litres on this thing and we still have a trundle drawer. So it's about uh, 90 litres in the headboard, 60 litre water tank underneath. So we've got fresh water for days. That's all controlled. Uh, down here, guys, we've got a nice little switch there. Plumbed water, running water. There's nothing better than having fresh running water. And a cool little switch actually to turn that on. A bit different to how I've got it on the 79. And this side over here, I've got a second tap. This one's just gravity fed. So can run off the two different tanks. I can just gravity feed or I can hook a hose onto that one, have a shower and uh, a bit of a carry on. Let's keep going. Obviously we've got the two big uh, 35 BF Goodriches on the back. I went with a double spare. It's always good to have two spares, especially when we're gonna be sort of hardcore wheeling in this truck. You never know what might happen. They've never let me down so far, but you never know. Of course, no surprises here. Bush Company 270 XT awning. So quick, so easy. Uh, we didn't go the max on this truck. We just need that little bit of shade for those weekend trips. Absolutely rock solid up on top. And now let's get into this little section. So have a go at this guys, we got the Dometic. It's the 80 litre upright fridge, super neat, super tidy. Obviously it takes up the whole space. I love the upright fridges, we get asked this all the time. Would I prefer a chest fridge or an upright fridge? Here I really could have gone either way, but I'm so used to the upright fridge in the 79, I absolutely love them. So yeah, stoked to have the big Dometic in here. Uh, we might wrap the front of this like the 79, so it's black and all matches, but We'll see how we go. There still is a bit of space to store things here. We've got a couple more outlets, um, USB, cigarette, bits and pieces. Both sides have got nice little lights for uh, at night time, dimmer switches, orange, white, you know, the usual carry on. But how good does that look? I actually couldn't be more stoked. 
The Boss product, guys, is second to none. Um, if you're looking to build any canopies, go check them out, compare them. As soon as you start using them and playing with the Boss canopy compared to everyone else, you sort of fall in love. But that pretty much sums up the premium train canopy. Let's go under the bonnet. Obviously, we got the Stano snorkel. Now, I ummed and ahed about this, but on the GU, the Stano just looks so clean. It's on the passenger side, so I don't have to worry about that induction noise, but it sounds unreal. We went to Fabwits. Uh, we got the four inch snorkel, stainless steel snorkel, powder coated black to match the exterior. We've also got on the Fabwits airbox. Uh, these guys did a super good job. Absolutely stoked, out the back of Toowoomba. Now, the ZD30. If you, if you want to know the ins and outs of everything that's gone on here, go back and watch the build videos, guys, and it will run you through exactly what's happening under the bonnet here. But basically, we toyed with throwing this in the bin and dropping a big V8 in, a barra, um, whether we put a 79 motor in it, which is what I really want to do. I'd love to drop a VDJ in here just to kind of maybe annoy some of those diehard Nissan fans. But um, we ended up... Sticking with the uh, the setup that was in here, we bought it. It was absolutely bastardized. We stripped it down, basically started again. The boys at Evolution Tuning went to town. He's sort of the guy that does bulk GUs. He's across it. He knows everything that's going on, and he did a great job. So it's a compound turbo, so a twin turbo setup off an Iveco daily. So it's uh, something that's a little bit different. Uh, not too many of these setups getting around, but uh, we ended up with a twin turbo. We've got the front mount intercooler, we've got the bigger injectors, guys, uh, and we ended up going from 200 horsepower up to about 289 horsepower and 710 newton meters, which is absolutely insane out of a little four-cylinder ZD. Now, keep in mind, I know those figures sound high, that was on the smaller tires. So we did the tuning before uh, we actually rebuilt the car. So that was running on 33s, so I've probably lost between 15 and 20% of that power running the 35s. But uh, this thing has got all the torque coming on real low down. If you go watch the build video, you'll be able to see the dyno charts. So the drivability of this thing is perfect, especially for wheeling. I get that boost coming on really early. The torque curve starts down nice and low, and this thing drives like an absolute beast. So that kind of wraps up underneath the bonnet. This is kind of Still a work in progress. We said we're about 95% done. The last 5% is really tidying up the inside of the GU. So we've done a few little bits and pieces. Um, Kale from EC Off Road did as much as he could before the Melbourne show. It's gonna go back to Kale and we're gonna finish it off. But he actually sound deadened the whole inside of the cab, which is epic. Uh, we've gone with a aftermarket wheel. We are probably gonna change this one up. It was all we had at the time. I'm not a big fan of the red decal, so we're gonna go with a different wheel, but it'll be similar. Uh, EC off-road wheel with all the uh, controls for your stereo. We're running the EC off-road head unit here, which will link to the uh, steering wheel, which will be epic. The XRS unit in the car, um, GME XRS, nice and handy. I'm so used to grabbing the, uh, the XRS unit on the 79, it's above, up above my head, so I keep, reaching for the sky and, and missing, but we've got the XRS unit in here. We've got all our switching tucked away in here for all our spotties nice and neat, out of the way. Uh, seats, guys, we are running the Shieldman. Now, I put the Shieldman in before I did my lap of Australia, and I was absolutely stoked with them in the 79. So we thought, why not chuck them in the GU? We went with the black this time, no seat covers. I'm a grub, in and out dirty, salt water, whatever, they've lasted extremely well on the 79 couldn't be more happy these ones actually have seat warmers as well which is absolutely ridiculous but when we were down in uh, victoria for the melbourne show and it was freezing driving around with a seat warmer i was uh flasher than a rat with a gold tooth i've never had them before a uh, little bit fancy but uh very cool so the center console is still factory guys i do want to change this and i want to wrap it all uh, in the same fabric as the Shieldman seat. So stay tuned, uh, we'll, we'll sort of black out this center console. Stereo system was all upgraded. We got bigger speakers and bits and pieces from EC Off-Road. Nothing too fancy, guys. No subs, amps, or any of that carry on. Magic buttons. So this was sort of like one of the last little pieces to the build was we had the good suspension. We've got the big wheels and tires. We've got the power under the bonnet. 
And now we've got the magic button. So we went with the Harrop E-lockers, guys, front and rear. So we'll be going back to Little Red, where I got held up last time, and we're gonna drive that thing. So obviously any hardcore wheeler, guys, it's not a true four-wheel drive until you can lock your front and rear. So Harrop E-lockers, super easy right there when we're driving. I'll let you know how they go when we put them to the test, but look, for the hardcore wheeler, it was no uh, a no-brainer. We, we had to twin lock it. We got the pillar pod mount uh, with the two red arc gauges. Gives us our boost, EGTs, water temp, just standard things that you should be keeping an eye on, especially uh, since we've worked this motor almost to its limits. So it's good to know what the motor's doing while you're cruising along. It's right there. We've got alarms that come on when your EGTs get too hot, water temp gets too hot and uh, for overboosting, it flashes red, so super handy. We've got the little Alpha Tech down here, so this links up with the tune. I've actually got three different tunes that I can run. So we've got basically standard, um, which I don't really use. We've got number one, which is eco sort of mode. Great for just driving around town. And then we've got number two, which is basically big boy mode, gives me that full power, so. Absolutely stoked with that. It is nice to not run around at full power all the time and be putting that extra stress on the motor when I don't really need it. But I do have all that extra power right there, push the button uh, when we're off road or if we've got a couple of hard obstacles, I know I can just uh, pump it up and this thing will go like the clappers. Well, there we go, guys, the big GU. Uh, apologies for the wait on the rig rundown. We've been so busy out filming uh, that we sort of neglected this one a little bit, guys. But there it is. Uh, like we said, it's about 95% done. So let us know in the comments, is there anything else you think we should add? Is there anything you think we should have done differently? Uh, let us know in the comments. I love, I love the feedback. What do you love? What do you hate? Don't be, uh, don't be shy, rip in. Um, but look guys, this car's going to be my hardcore wheeler slash Ali's tourer. So Ali reckons she's stealing this one to get out there and take all the girls out on the adventures. So you should be seeing plenty more content. Uh, me hardcore wheeling with the boys, Ali stealing this for weekends out with the girls. So plenty more content coming with the GU. I hope you guys like it as much as we do. We had an absolutely epic time trying to put this one together. Big shout out to Carl from EC Off Road. Uh, he busted his ass to get this thing ready for the Melbourne show. And uh, look, of course, to all the other sponsors that obviously helped along the way. Uh, big shout out to Boss. He got this thing done uh, just in the nick of the time for the show as well. We actually put it on the day before the show. I couldn't be happier, you guys. Always wanted a single cab, dirty GU, and we've got one. So now there's only one thing left to do. It's get out there and wheel it. Till next time, guys. Make sure you get out and enjoy the Explore Life.